Have you ever found yourself worrying about all the Turo mistakes you don't want to make? Well, luckily for you, I've already made a lot of the mistakes you can encounter on Turo. So in today's video, we're going to be going over five things you absolutely have to know before renting your car on Turo. Each of the five different topics will come with a small story of how it affected me before I knew about it. Also, today's video is actually sponsored by the like button, the sub button, and the notification bell. If you want to check out all they have to offer, feel free to tap all three of them below. And as a quick side note, side effects of tapping those three buttons are the following. Happiness, a successful business, and knowledge. But with that being said, and those buttons tapped, let's get started with the video. So to start us off with topic number one, we have not taking pictures in all the right places. So the title of this topic kind of explains it pretty well, but in your Turo journey, things are gonna happen to your car and you're gonna need evidence to back up the claims that you make. Whether it's someone smoking in your vehicle or someone crashing your vehicle, you're gonna need good pre-trip photos of all the right places in and outside of your car. Back in my earlier Turo days, I used to miss a lot of smoking spots on the inside of my vehicle. Then, when I go to report the smoking issue, even though I could find plenty of ash post-trip, my claim would get denied because I didn't have enough evidence that the ash wasn't there before the trip. And actually, in order to better expand on this topic, look out for a video coming from me soon on how to get all of your smoking claims approved. I'll be going over all the places you need to take photos of in order to almost guarantee approved smoking claims when your renters do smoke. And obviously, the best way to be notified of that video is to make sure that you're subscribed and that the notification bell is on. As for photos of the exterior, I haven't ever missed pre-trip photos of a spot on the car, so I've always been covered on that end. But let's move into topic number two, because it also has to do with photos and I've been burned badly with it. So topic number two is not checking all the areas of your car post-trip. What I mean by this is there have been numerous times where I perform a checkout and I think that the car is all good to go, but it turns out that I missed some damage to the vehicle and it's already past 24 hours. So what I've started to do is check all the nooks and crannies of the cars when they're returned. Places I've been burned on before are checking the gas cap and recently opening the sunroof cover in order to check the actual sunroof glass. Just this week, we had a renter return a vehicle and the car had another rental set for 28 hours later, so it didn't get booked in between those two rentals. And when I checked the vehicle initially, everything looked perfect. But when I went to get the car ready, I took it for a car wash and it started to literally rain from the ceiling. Turns out that the previous renter had destroyed the sunroof glass and didn't tell me about it. At that point, it was already too late to make a damage claim on the vehicle and it is a cost that I have to eat now. But that's okay because it gave me this lesson to be able to hand down to all of you. So make sure to check all the places on your car when your cars are returned. On to topic number three, we have being on the 60 plan. So this topic is for all the Turo hosts out there that are terrified of your cars getting damaged. You need to understand that it's bound to happen. You like the comfort of being able to report damage on rock chips. I get it because I used to be like you. But the thing that Turo doesn't tell you about the 60 plan is that if you put in too many claims, you know, like every time your car gets a rock chip or a tiny scratch or whatever the case might be, they're going to eventually call you up randomly and basically tell you to stop making too many claims or get off the 60 plan or else. Basically, if you don't stop putting in a ton of claims, they're gonna kick your car off the platform or restrict you to the 90 plan. So with that, and the fact that you're giving 40% of your earnings away, it turns out that running your fleet on the 60 plan just simply is not worth it. You're making pennies on the dollar. And in my eyes, the only people that rent on the 60 plan have an attachment to their vehicle. And in my opinion, this is a band-aid that just needs to be ripped off. Moving on to topic number four, we have charging guests before rating them. So let me break this topic down for you. Have you ever received a car back from a trip and the gas wasn't full, or they drove extra miles, or left a bunch of pet hair in the car, or maybe all of the above? So you, being the entrepreneur that you are, went immediately to charge them for the incidentals or issues because you wanna get paid, I get it. And then 20 minutes later, you get rated by the guest and you see it's a one star with no explanation. Yeah, I've been there and I've seen that. So one way that we are able to get around this is by always rating the renter before charging them for anything. This way, they'll get notified that you rated them and nine times out of 10, they'll rate you right away. These ratings are almost always fives, which is nice, 
And then as soon as that's done, you can hit them with the charges. This is one great way to keep your five star ratings up and you can definitely thank me later or you could even thank me right now by hitting the like button. But anyways, we've made it all the way to topic number five. For topic number five, we have holding on to a car for too long. So for some of you that are new to Turo, the ones who just bought their first car for their fleet, or even those of you that have been on the platform for like six months to a year, you may still be on all of your original cars right now, but there's gonna come a time where you have to part with your vehicles. Whether you trade them in or sell them privately or whatever the case might be, you will have to do it at some point. And one mistake that I've made that you hopefully won't make is holding on to a dying car for way too long. So let's talk about my 2013 Range Rover Evoque. I had it on the platform for a little over a year and in terms of money in the door, it was one of my best breadwinners. But in the last three months that I owned it, things were going wrong with it left and right. I replaced the turbo exhaust, the radiator, the heater core, the battery. I mean, you name it, I probably replaced it. And in the last couple weeks that I owned it, the car sprung another check engine light and there was a part of the computer that needed to be replaced. I decided I was gonna fix that and then get rid of it. And the decision was made because this car had cost me nearly $6,500 in the span of three months. And I honestly didn't wanna find out what needed to be replaced next. So to make a long story short, if you start to notice that you're repairing one of your vehicles over and over and over again, you may want to consider if it's worth it to keep it around. But hey, I know I said I was only going to cover five topics, but as a thank you for hitting the like button, because I know you definitely did, I'm going to add a bonus topic here. The bonus topic for today is doing Turo from your home location. Please, 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 please do not make this mistake. In my earlier days, I was renting out my vehicles from my actual home. And over the course of your Turo journey, you're gonna have a couple people that get mad at you for dumb reasons. Maybe they smoked in your car and they're mad that you charged them. Maybe they return your vehicle on E and drove an extra thousand miles and thought that it would be free. Either way, it's super possible that some of these people could retaliate. And if you're renting your cars from your home, they know exactly where you live if they ever wanna do anything. I haven't had any bad situations arise from this, but I'm sure there are people that have had crazy things happen to them while doing so. In my opinion, it's definitely worth the money to pay for a location to rent your vehicles from. So if it were me, I'd sit down, review my business finances, and work in that cost. But with that being said, I want to thank you for watching today's video. I hope that you found one, two, or maybe six topics that you've learned from and can use moving forward. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate you tapping the like button, subscribing, and hitting the notification bell to be notified of future content. And until next time, take care everybody.